future. We are forming a global policy lab because we want to engage with emerging economies, with key policy institutions in those economies, and with universities and think tanks, and also connect them to each other because there's so little contact between them and so much history of bad blood, and you need to have these uh, conversations much more intensely because a lot of the challenges that we are facing will need their participation. We are focusing on the Rethinking Global Finance, which is really looking at the world financial architecture, what happened to it after the global financial crisis, but from the perspective of emerging economies. Another area we are very interested in, the, every country I go to now in the emerging world, the middle income trap, the idea that these countries are stuck in middle income. We need to think about, you know, how do we break out of such a trap, or is there even such a trap? You know, what is the experience from countries that have just gone through this uh, transition? What can we learn from that? Understanding that these emerging economies are very different. You know, some of them uh, have a long experience of being middle income. Some have come to it very recently. They have different histories and so on. So having them talk to each other, this peer-to-peer, -peer is very critical to what we're trying to do. We think this is much more effective than coming to tell them you know, from the advanced economies, this is what you should do and shouldn't do. We are also uh, working on migration. We have this Global Migration Initiative. It engages 50 faculty here at LSE, and we then went out and formed an alliance of leading universities on migration. And, and what's really exciting about this is the last universities to join us were the universities in North Africa and the Middle East, and where they have such experience of living in migration, adjusting to mig migration, trying to turn migration into something positive and productive. And that's you know, where we think a lot of our future work in the migration area will be about looking at that experience. They don't talk to each other. Again, it's the same issue. We are facilitating these conversations, conversations between the Turks and the Lebanese, between the Kurds and, the, and the, uh, the Lebanese, for example. This is where we can play a role. And of course, always connecting it to the core at LSE. Also, we have experience for how to work uh, in the policy process, how you can be effective in using research. So, that role of facilitator, catalyst, is, is so crucial for us. And I think that's different from what others uh, have been doing. Of course, LSE is the, the, the place to do it. LSE has its very international faculty. It's even more international student body. It's place in London, you know, the hub of the emerging world. As LSE was, of course, started engaging with the social issues, with the economic issues. That tradition, I think, is very much in a spirit of the Global Policy Lab as well. We are building an architecture that brings in students, researchers, policymakers on the key issues like migration, like climate change. We want to have them uh, working at LSE, but also in the countries uh, where these challenges uh, are being uh, faced. And we want to bring in key policy institutions in these countries, universities in these countries. We want to connect them within the countries, but also across. Peer-to-peer -peer is absolutely critical to us. This was all started because there was this frustration among the emerging economies that they could never really come with reasonable criticism of proposals that came before the G20, and they could never come with their own proposals. So if we can be part of the first proposal going to the G20 that really emanates from the emerging world, that would be a, a dream.